when you are somewhere that you get paid money that's not even enough to transport you or to facilitate you transport to go home it's a toxic environment yes these are things people don't talk about yeah hey Maze. thank you thank you thank you very much thank you Asante sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. We have a great show lined up for you, Maze. Saikonza na wa Kenya mumeamua hakuna wiki itapita without our Deputy President, His Excellency Rigiji. Haja trend, Maze. Kwanza, this week, the truthful man was on the spot for many things, but let's uh, focus on this dancing style. Maze, some people are making fun of that video, but you underestimate the amount of effort you need to dance with just your neck. You know, the president is the head of the country, Alafu Rigiji is the neck. Haters wanna say, Rigiji can shake any other body part. Handshake is where he draws the line. <laughs> hey, Maze. Now, before to Bali, this week, in the same event, President Ruto was treated to how unserious Kenyans can be. While speaking, kwa yu event, Rigiji al kwana dance, mse ali approach president. Akamuliza kama anaweza msaidia na namba ya governor Sisi Limbariri. Nilikuwa na keti hapo chama mwingine akaniambia si unisaidia namba ya huyu mama. Nikamwangalia, nikamwambia wewe unataka kusimama? Akasema hapana. Huyu mama kwani ameolewa? Please. Huyo ni bibi ya mtu. So Nyinyi vijana wa Jenny Story wewe kama unatafuta simu ni kwa sababu unataka kusimama kura hata wajana na mambo mengine Mimi kwanza nimekuwa mapo kwa vile president aliminyima namba ati, ati unataka kusimama hapana wewe huyo ni bibia wenyewe Now I thought angesema yes nataka kusimama ndio angeambiwa wewe huyo ni bibia wenyewe <laughs> Eh mwanze Eh mwanze but you are pia yuko serious everybody knows that the only number president anapea watu saini 3% Imagine, imagine na vile maisha ni ngumu. Msia napata na fasi ya kuenda kuongea na president, halafu wanaomba hook up. <laughs> Does not make sense. And th that was in Narok, uh, where the president all also reiterated his support for women in leadership in a very special way. Na mimi ni supporta mkubwa ya kina mama. Na endeleeni hivyo, uh, si mumesikia chairman wetu wa chama, ni mama anaitua, uh, uyo mrembo uyo. Eh? Anaitwa Sisi Limbarire. Huyo ndio chairman wa chama na mumesikia. Chairman wetu ni mama. <laughs> Anaitwa Sisi Limbarire. President ana support akina mama mpaka anawapatia kazi ya kukuwa wanaume. Now an erivo president alinyima huo mse namba because imagine ati inge happen alafu unasikia mse anasema eh hey, buda unajua huyo ndio bwana ya chairman. <laughs> But jokes aside, Maze Embu Governor Sisi Limbarire is one of the most down-to-earth politicians you'll ever meet in this country. Take it from me. In other news, a young man from Kisumu was on the news for innovating a shoe that can play music. He, unayo na apa, na ita current flow screen. He inazuia, where zikishikana usiweze kuchomeka inazuia inazuia usiweze kuchomeka miguu hii hapa hii ndio control system ya mziki. unaweza cheza mziki yako hapa uweke pause uweke next uweke play na pia unaweza kuweka usb ama pia unaweza charge unaweza charge kiatu hiki na hapa mi hiyo waya ya kuchoma miguu angeiacha ndio wasio kuona eh buda uko na kiatu moto Eh wazi. Eh. Hizo pia tu kwanza wanafaa ziite Mahewa Jordan. Now uh, I, I know we should support innovation but kidogo pale sijaelewa hii kabisa maze. Haters wanasema for once wameleta invention ya kusikiza ngoma za pretty vishi. Now but, but why would you need music coming from your feet? Maze think about the average distance ya kutoka kwa masikio yako mpaka kwa miguu. Unless hii ndio sasa home theater ya watu wafupi. Unakatu hivi unasikia? Unasikia ngoma. Now as a musician imagine msia kisikiza ngoma zako kwa miguu. Ati sauti soul my foot. <laughs> Now <laughs> Eh hey, maze. Anyway, 
All in all, we have to give it up to this young innovator for creating uh, another style for people to consume content. Uh, we wish him all the best. And while the project is still under uh, development, Najua, Labda, he's on to something. And Vile Tumesema, wish him all the best. Ebukwanza, I take you to New Zealand, where they, their, their civil aviation authority have resolved that moving forward, they will be weighing passengers before they travel by plane. As in, basically, from now on, they want to know how heavy you are before you get on a plane, which is an interesting contrast. contrast. Na Kenya maliwezi pandandege kama wesi mzito. Now, <laughs> New Zealand are literally redefining the concept of traveling light. But think about that for a minute. Imagine you on a flight. Alafu umepita kilo na 500 grams. Maze, ah, maze, nilijua hiyo motura ita niaribia safari. <laughs> eh, maze. Eh. Yes, na, 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 hiyo, na hiyo sheria ibaki tu huko kwa mandege maze. Wasijaribu kuileta kwa matatu. Ati unapimua weight before ingie kwa mat. Ati edu, wee dugu. Ni kama utaeda na taxi. <laughs> na siyo mina kata uigie gari ni ratiri. Ama utaigia choo kwanza. <laughs> eh? Tuwene kama mambo itakuwa tofauti. Kwanza, kwanza hizi safari za mbali watu wanaeza umia. Tunasimama na kuru 10 minutes na mtu wasijaribu kukura ugari. Sina mafuta ya kupadisha mizigo kemede. Na, 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 na kama nasimu ukure ugari wede na SGR. But chill guys, you're safe. Hii sheria itafikia matatu. Kuna vitu mingi sana uneza fanya kwa matatu. Lakini hawezi fanya kwa ndege. Kama juzi there's a guy wa... Uh, walikuwa naenda kulan South Korea maze. Alishikwa. He had to be arrested because alifungua mlango. Kabla ndege ijalani. A feat said to be impossible. 194 passengers are on board and they're getting battered by the intense wind. Maze unashanga mtu ametoka ndege. Kwa nini amefura hivyo maze? Kumbe ni hile hewa amenyonya. Before I land, Mazi. Omsi ali kwa kwandege, but ni kama jabba zili monesha ako kwa paradiso. Wasi wa ketorai. Poleni, Mazi. Moving on, we have a great show lined up for you, Mazi. Kama kawaida, this topic could not have come at a better time. Renowned journalist and media personality Shiro Morioki started a very important conversation on the internet last week, and she was kind enough to agree kukuja ku share the same with us on this episode. The topic is what to do after losing your job and why losing a job should not be a cause for shame. Now, I've, I've stated here before that Shiro is one of my favorite people in the media industry and also one of the wittiest ladies I've ever met. You loved her the last time she featured on the Wicked Edition and I trust that you will appreciate and how relevant and invaluable the conversation she has started is. I cannot wait to get into it, so please trust me and join us on the other end of this short commercial break. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. I'm very excited because one of my favorite peoples is in the house. Aww. And it's someone most of you love. Shiro Morioki is in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm one of your favorite people. Welcome. Yes. You, you yes. hide that well. No, I, no I, I don't hide it well. I talk I, as in, I don't know how to express how hard you've made me laugh huh? for the times oh, that I've met Oh, I thought that sentence was going somewhere else. Eh? Eh, maze, umeanza mapema. Welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. Eh, kwa wale wa sewajei on Ashiro, if you've never had a chance to listen to Shiro, today is your day, and it's for a very special topic. How to survive after losing a job. Right. Why did you decide that that is an important conversation? You know, the thing is, when people lose their jobs, especially to retrenchment, yes. people think that it's something really embarrassing. And you haven't really done anything wrong, yeah? I think you should be embarrassed, like, kaulifutua job, juyawizi, then yes. don't tell anybody, go to the grave with that. But, come on, am I going to run around telling people I was fired for being a thief? No, but... So you can vie in the next elections? Ha! Huh. <laughs> You're not exactly. wrong. Anyway, but I honestly believe that, um, you know, we need to take away the stigma from retrenchment, especially because it's happening so much right now. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we saw last year, Twitter. I can remember the way uh, the Twitter office in Nigeria was closed literally like two months after it was opened. And like, you're excited. 
having got this job and then all of a sudden you don't have that job. And those people did nothing wrong. It's just yeah. that there was a change of management and then things just happened the way they happened. Yes. Same thing with my situation, my previous employer, they decided to take a new strategic approach to storytelling. And then as a result, several roles were made redundant and I was one of them. And I strongly believe that job loss, yeah. especially if you've not done anything wrong, should not, should not be shameful. You've mm. not done anything wrong. See any life. Ni life, life happens, yeah. Ni life. And my friend, I have, a, I have an evil friend, and it was Deno Spina. Uh, he says, he says, uh, there's something he says, uh, and I, I'll, I'll equate it. When you talked about how you lost your job, you mm -hmm. talked about a process right. they took before they let you go. Deno mm -hmm. and story at Vilevase Ufu to a job come Django. Where was Kam Kesho? Does the process, yeah. does the process help? If there's a process, you worked for an international media house. Yes. Does the process help? It does help. It helps you, especially if you know that something like that is coming, even though you don't know that you personally will be affected. Yes. It helps put in your mind that, hey, it's a business and yanze kujipanga. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so we were told um, mid last year that, you know, there's this new digital first strategy that they want to start adopting and it might by then, we're not speaking in like specifics. We're saying that it might lead to certain roles being closed, just, uh, certain people being moved about. But then, of course, because we are all adults, you know how to read between the lines. And that really did help. It, it, it helps you make financial plans. It helps you make your, uh, set your mind, you know, psychologically and mentally as well. Like, OK, um, if this was to hit me personally, what do I do? So even like you start pangaing your finances from before like okay there are things i need to stop doing i need to start saving more money i have to take things like retrenchment insurance people didn't know that there's entrenchment insurance by the way if you don't know now you know mm -hmm. you uh, uh, getting something like retrenchment insurance um just basically tightening the bootstrap sending out applications to other places things like that so it really does help it's not like like there you've mentioned that you now and you know it's happened and then not just kwam jengo there are companies where you work a full day and then in the evening after they've gotten they've squeezed the last bit of sweat from you yes. then in the evening you're called to hr like hey, hey come and then they give you a letter so I, I actually am very grateful that they gave us that time to prepare. On the job, there's the idea of you suspect that you could lose your job. Right. But when that, that is not there, we have most people who are like, oh, I hate this job. Like a spendy job. Like you struggle with the job. Very few people love their jobs, mm. right? You only love your job. Most people only love their jobs when they're about to get fired. And that's, <laughs> that, yeah, that's when you are like, hey, Maze, I really need this. And that, that really does not register well with people who are not employed yet. People mm. who wish they can get that opportunity. Yeah. Like, uh, <clears throat> what, 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 what is your how When you go far back to when you, start, you, you, you first were looking for a job, mm -hmm. what was your experience? How much did you enjoy your job? And how does it affect you when things stop? Are you talking about this particular or just like from the, In from the jump from yes, the yes, beginning? Yes, yes, yes. You, like you're right, you know, like when you're out there hustling and trying to find a job, it's really incomprehensible for to you listening to anybody else saying, ah, my workplace is toxic. And then you're like, eh, hey, simi atani pata your workplace, toxic or not. Yes. But I feel like it's also really unfortunate that because of that, people who are actually in a really tough working situation, now they get their complaint silent because they're told, when your mother kukona wenye yu anatafta job, you know, Ah, yes. So it's both situations are valid. And I, re I, I remember really looking for a job and I looked for a long time until I got to the point where I'm like, let me just start building myself on social media. Yes. Because, you know, these jobs are not forthcoming. And then from my social media is when these opportunities started to avail themselves, right? Yes, yes. <clears throat> and then even having said that, I have been in places where I was not... I'm really trying to be politically correct here because I don't, don't be. believe. This is the I don't believe edition. in banning. When someone puts you on the spot, you wait, say wait. you are just I joking. I ban that bridge. Will you come and employ me? You <laughs> say, Stop. You say you are just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Dr. Kingwari. Yeah. Why do you do it jokes? It's no, a good excuse. <laughs> no, um, I think, you know, when you're in a toxic work situation, that is really valid. And I feel that that is not on you as the employee. It is a responsibility of your employer to make sure you have a good working situation. Yeah. I'm sure there are people here who have been in situations where 
the only thing that has stopped you from punching your boss is because you have rent to pay and you're afraid of going to jail. Mm -hmm. Right? So yes. that's, that's the same thing. And it's the responsibility of employers to make working conditions for their employees good. If there's a complaint about a supervisor that and it's a you know if it's one it's if it's one complaint you know but if several people have complained about the same person and nothing is getting done then you're perpetuating a toxic work environment uh -huh. if you're not paying people enough if people are there like jesus christ i can't even afford a matter people are walking home and they're employed that is a toxic work environment. If you have, if there's favoritism in the workplace, a lot of siasa, or people are stabbing each other in the back in that workplace, and you as your employer, or as a HR professional, you know about such things, and you're not doing anything about it, you're perpetuating a toxic work environment. And I think that is wrong, because even when I started this conversation on my social media last week, and I said, you know, that uh, even, you know, job loss can also be you only choking up where you are and you decided, I'm done, I need to quit. So that's also you losing your employment, even though it was a choice that you made. Okay. And so as a result of that, like, I got a lot of um, uh, messages of people like, what, I'm working in this toxic, really toxic place, you know, my boss is like this, or, you know, we're not, we not heard, I'm not being paid well, like, like in, in this uh, tough economic times, now go back to quit because what am I going to do next? Yeah. And I feel like even as we're talking about these conversations about retrenchment and job loss, we also need to talk about the people who are stuck in toxic situations because that is really important. Like for instance, if come on, uh, if I'm Dosi, and I remember when I started out when I was young, it was really tough. So instead of now, when I, be, I, I become a senior person in that uh, organization, instead of learning from how hard it was, when I was new in that organization, whether I joined as an intern or entry-level job. So I've joined that organization and things were really hard for me. And then I've risen through the ranks and I've become someone senior. So instead of learning, I'm like, if I suffered, then they must also suffer. Yeah. And I feel like that is awesome. attitude is also really prevalent. Okay. And we, it comes all the way from high school. You know, when yeah. people were being uh, bullied when you're a mono and yes. then... <laughs> <laughs> by the way, just for context, his high school mate is here. I feel like we need to, <laughs> to unpack what that is about. But yeah, it's, yes. that comes from high school yeah. where you, you will bully because even you, you were bullied. And so when we carry these attitudes into workplaces, then it's not right. It's interesting, Shiro. That's uh, a lot to unpack for what to just said. First of all, I don't know, Kamam, the only one who noticed that Shiro is a cool kid. Mbaka na kiswaili. Mumeskeyo patia ifa mamudosi. Ah, no, 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 check it, check it. And it's also, I need you to confirm, kindly confirm, that being uh, paid less is a toxic work environment. <laughs> like you can go to the ATM, wangalia hii pesa, useme, hey, kazi imeanza kukua toxic. <laughs> As in, it's, you, you, you picked it up very well from when you are somewhere that you get paid money that's not even enough to transport you or to facilitate you transport to go home it's a toxic environment. Yes. These are things people don't talk about. Yeah. If I can't get to work and I can't go home, well, what, what are we doing? That's why, well, you know, what is the reason why we, we work? We work to better ourselves financially so that we can invest, so that we can grow. Like my life is, um, it's not slavery, please. We evolved. We ended slavery in this country when we kicked out the colonizers, okay? There should yeah. be no more slavery. So like, if I'm going to work and my job is is for barely making ends meet, come it's on, bro. Like it's, I, I feel like people should be paid what they're worth. We, we heard Jero Teach say on the show mm -hmm. uh, some time back, and I mentioned this to you, and she said that she had been employed for 20 years, right? And she had nothing to show for it. Like she doesn't have money like you would hope to get money, right? Mm. And that for me was scary. How long do you need to be on a job so that it will be beneficial to you after you exit. Like you don't have to be scared of losing your job. You can no. be well, be well, be, you, can be, you can pick up your life and move on to something else without being scared. Is it because of the comfort zone uh, that you live uh, in, within certain standards because you're employed? Or does this mean that when you're employed, you should always plan for your exit? 
you know, that question of yours has so many layers to it. Like, even as you're talking, I was trying to figure out how I was going to answer. First of all, like, even when we talk about the teach is a specific situation, yes. you know, I can't speak to it because I'm not, I don't know how much she was earning. I don't know what her lifestyle was like. Uh, but, you know, my father, God rest his soul, used to say that um, if you rely 100% solely on um, employment, unless yes. you're those CEOs who are getting paid 10 million shillings a month or more, because they're there, they're people, do you know the people in this country that are making 30 million a month, every month, every month 30 million, me would not know what to do, I'd be confused. Mm -hmm. Every time that money, I've only spent 200k and then boom, there's another 30 million, I'm like, wait a minute. So unless you're making that kind of money, you're never going to be wealthy, you have to really think outside of the box. And I remember I said it in my video that my last job, because you know, I was making some decent money, uh, I was doing what I loved. Uh, because I really enjoy being a journalist and especially being a journalist in that organization was a fantastic experience. So I really, I settled. I was like, see, there's a nice salary coming at the end of every month. See, I'm living in a house I like. See, I have my small little car. What am I stressed about? And so even you've asked, at the end of your question, when you say you have to plan for your exit, I think that's the most important thing. And planning for your exit doesn't should not entail you just sitting there and waiting for your salary every month. And also, like you said, st setting standards. Let me tell you something. Those people that you're setting san standards were not thinking about you, eh? How, how often, like, do you sit down and ask yourself, like, even you, I want you guys to ask yourself this. How often do you sit down and you, and you ask yourself, I wonder what Dr. Kingori is doing with his money today. <laughs> I wonder where, like, your friend, I wonder what, if you have a friend called Eric, I wonder where Eric is drinking today. I wonder if he's drinking a uh, single malt whiskey. Do, does that thought ever cross your mind? Nope. No. No. Yeah. So when you know, now, <laughs> now you're... Uh, that is the chairman. <laughs> chairman wa wanakamati wa rochafu. That's yeah, it. those are the people my mother calls village witches. If you do that... <laughs> Uh -huh, yes. If I'm sitting down wondering where Modoni went to do her hair, yes. and I'm asking myself if she spent less than 10,000, it's very cheap. Am I not a witch? You are. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you said you are. I feel like... It, it, ah! it, felt, <laughs> no, 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 no. It, felt, it felt a little personal. No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's context. Yeah, but yeah, as, as, as I was saying, this story, I could set standards. It, you're setting standards for people who are not thinking about you at all. They're busy with thinking about, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? Uh, there's this deal in Hijaiva. How do I make sure that everything comes together? They're not thinking about you. No one here has sat down and asked themselves where Shiromuriki lives and how much rent she pays. Yeah. Nobody cares. But, the, uh, but when I'm here thinking that I need to set standards because I worked for this organization, I have to be driving this car, I have to be paying this amount of rent, I have to be living in Lovington. Then after I've set standards for all of you guys on Instagram, I'm left with exactly 100 shillings to eat, please. Uh, we cannot have enough of Shiro in one episode, but oh. the good news is uh, she's online now, and um, I believe she's best place to tell you yes. where to find her content. Because so, you can listen to Shiro all day. I am at Shiro Morioki Twitter, uh, Shiro Morioki on Facebook, Shiro Morioki on Instagram. I also have a podcast. Uh, we've actually just recorded our fifth episode and we're launching at the end of June uh, with the Charles Ouda. I think if you watch um, Salem on uh, Showmax and you watch Second Family on Showmax, you've seen him on there. So he's my business partner and that's, we have a, a podcast called The Undiscovered Podcast. We'll be looking at arts, music and culture in Nairobi and around Kenya and hopefully around Africa. Just talking to these, you know, these musicians that, you know, they are saying that it's very tough to be a musician because how many billions of songs are dropped every day? Yeah. Sindio. And so there's so many great talents that go under the radar. People True. don't know them. And yes. so we are discovering those artists and giving them a platform. So if you're, you believe you're a great artist, you know, hit me up, send me a DM, and we could have you on our podcast really soon. Very good vibes. What's my coffee, Ashiro? Wazi, thank you very much kwa kukamisho yetu. Thank you for having me. Always good vibes. Always. We hope utakuja tena na tena. <laughs> always. Always have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now next week we're actually setting up a conversation. Yeah, a gentleman I met to kwa one of the offices I had gone to see, see a friend. Alin introduced kwa concept in it the capitalism circle. Why watu analia sai bila kuna pesa lakini kuna mtu ananunua Range Rover. 
And he explained this concept to me so nicely that I can't wait for us to do that episode, the guy and it were Ed. I can't wait for us to do that episode because it's an explanation here why some people are poor. And I think it carries a highlight here. By then, Bona Missy Mekingi do. Labda ni ujui system, he has the system. And I believe it's an episode Munafa ku watch out for next week. Uh, Nikisha Semaivo, that's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kingori.